EA Sports. It's only a game. Why do you have to be mad? Hey, what's up, dude? Stax is here, and welcome back to another NHL 20 upload. Now, as you can tell from the title, I got a pretty special upload here. I have acquired a franchise winger, and we're gonna I'm gonna be showing you today uh, how to grow a franchise winger. Just like the title says. Um, I haven't done one of these how-to videos for quite a while now. The last video I did was of Davis Lowe in NHL 19, and he was a franchise goaltender. And he came out pretty successful. We, we won like a couple cups with him or something like that. But uh, before I get in depth on this, I do want to mention that this was a request from Sonic Has Animations, and I'm going to put his name on the screen right now. Now, he requested that I do a medium elite forward. But uh, to be honest, it's not too much different between a medium elite and a medium franchise other than the fact that a medium franchise goal or medium franchise player grows a little bit faster than a medium elite player. But uh, if you guys do want me to do a medium elite player, then I, I will do that. But uh, other than that, we're going to get into this video right here. And basically, I'm going to show you quickly who we have that we're going to be drafting. Now, it's been four years, just so you know in this uh, game mode that I, I've not made the playoffs so this is a well needed acquisition so uh, here we have Gilbert Boucher and he is a medium franchise winger he is a sniper and he has a similar style to Mario Lemieux and he's definitely an NHL ready of course we're for sure going to be picking him at first overall so if we go back here quickly just go to the team I do already have a left winger in Quinton Robbins that I drafted quite a while ago. So if you go into here. And he is also a sniper. So this is going to make it a little bit difficult to, to grow the two on the same team. Especially knowing that Quinton Robbins is already a first line left wing sniper. And he had quite a big season last season. He had 83 points. 50 of the, 53 of them being goals. Now, the way I'm going to go at this is that... Um, Gilbert Boucher is definitely going to be playing first line minutes eventually this season. It's not going to be right away. We're going to try to make sure we find a place for him to play in. And he's going to grow into that spot eventually because he's a medium franchise player. And we're going to keep him on the left side. And my plan is, is that we're going to get Quinton Robbins here to play on the right side. Because if you look over here at his slap shot accuracy, it's 93 while his wrist shot accuracy is 92. So... Technically, he's probably going to play better on the, the right side. So we're going to move him over to the right side. And if that doesn't work out, then we'll probably have to make a trade at some point or something like that. But uh, the idea that I'm going to go for here is we're going to go for like a Patrick Kane and um, a Temi Panarin kind of role here. You know, not to like mimic them, but in a way we're going to mimic them. We're going to find a good center to play with them that can play make for them and set them up for um, a bunch of goals and whatnot. And uh, we definitely want to, if we go back here, get a goaltender because last season, or this season, we didn't do exactly too well um, in keeping the puck out of the back of our net. So we're going to get a good goaltender and we're going to update the, the defense and then hopefully get a good good center because if we look at Matt Deshane, he's only a second line forward and he's 33 years old. So he is losing a bit of, uh, of his skills and his endurance, so... We're definitely going to want to get a new first line center to play with these two. Quinton Robbins and Boucher. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to jump into that and I'm going to create a team here and I will be back. Okay, dudes, we're back. And as you can tell, I made a really huge change from uh, last season here. I do want to mention that the reason for this change is because of the, the weakness that um, the franchise left winger had. Now, that's... A really key point when it comes to your to your players that you're trying to grow is that I, I figured out what his weakness was and he, he's not the the physical type of player so so the best way to tackle that is to to add physical players to the lines that he plays on and I feel like he's gonna be a third line left winger to start off maybe even a second line we'll, we'll kind of see but uh I'll, I guess I'll get into detail on what I changed so Initially, I had Daniel Sprung, uh, a right wing sniper on the right wing, for the first year of uh, of the season. I have switched him out and traded him, and got uh, Anders Bjork back, who's a more defensive player. He's a two way forward. They're they're about the same age, but I needed someone to take on that second line uh, left wing if our franchise left winger isn't ready. 
So uh, he's going to take on that role. And uh, hopefully Blake Wheeler will be able to take on the, the first line role. I mean, he had 103 points and he was plus 20 last season. He's a physical right winger and we're, we're kind of hoping he can take on the role. But if he can't, because looking at his age, he's, he's one of, on to 38. His endurance is still decently good, 88. Uh, I feel like he'll, he'll be able to take on that role for at least a little bit of the season, hopefully. If not, then we can always put Kapanen up into that role. And the reason I made the trade to take out Daniel Sprong, um, one of our top right wingers, is because eventually our left winger, who is a medium franchise sniper, is most likely going to grow into a top line role because he's medium franchise this season. So uh, the, the plan is, like I said, is to have Quinton Robbins be moved over to the right side eventually. And then maybe Blake Wheeler will be put on either the second line or third line, depending on what his role is. And uh, yeah, we also made a trade for Ricard, Ricard Raquel. We're switching him out for Claude Giroux because Claude Giroux is set to become a bottom six forward. We had him last year, but he is going to lose a lot of uh, skills and uh, different points. So we decided to move Claude Giroux out, bring in Ricard Raquel. And even though he was a minus 22, uh, I'm kind of hoping he'll, he'll do a lot better in this role. We kept Patrice Bergeron, who we traded for last season. He's a two-way forward, and I think he'll help out a lot on the, the penalty kill. I mean, his face offices are really, really good, so that's going to be key. And then, basically, that's basically it. We also brought in Tom Wilson, who is another right-wing physical player. Hopefully, he can help out if he has to play with uh, a left winger that will definitely help out and so far that's basically it the goaltending situation is not looking too good for this season to be honest so if I go over to goalies oh and it's uh you Saros we had him for like many many years he's a starting goaltender and he hasn't really done good for us in the past but he he was considered a backup goaltender for the most part of those I mean, this is the first year that he's actually considered a, a starting goaltender role. So we're going to kind of hope that he, he turns out. If not, then we'll, um, we'll just have to depend on next season for him to do good or something or make a trade or some, something like that. But uh, yeah, this is basically the, the, the lineup that we have and what we're going to be set, setting forth here. Um, I really hope it turns out. Another key thing to look at is that their shooting percentage. I mean, Blake Wheeler takes a lot of shots, so I, I kind of feel like he, he's going to have to play on the second line, while Cap will probably take on the first line because that way Quinton Robbins can score quite a bit more goals and Blake Wheeler doesn't take away that shooting percentage from our Quinton Robbins. I mean, they both had 53 goals last season, so yeah. Okay, so going back to uh, the team here and the reasons why I made these moves, is uh so if we go over to our power play so our power play percentage was one of the worst in the league and adding Blake Wheeler is definitely going to help with that power play percentage considering most of his points were probably sc scored on the the power play there and then the penalty kill we go over here also one of the worst in the league so that's another another reason why I traded uh, Daniel Sprung out for Andrews B or Andrews Bjork is that how you pronounce it um, the reason we're going to be using Andrews Brook on the penalty kill and hopefully he can improve that significantly And then we we'll go back here. So yeah, that's basically the idea that we have I'm kind of hoping that our lefty is going to be a third liner for the most part of the season not to take away Any ice time from our top wingers there, but if he's second line material then we'll, we'll just use it as it is and we'll grow him into as that first line role but uh, yeah, this is basically the team that we're going to be using for the first year. And we're just going to hope that he turns out. Um, I don't think there's much else I need to show here. If we go to propose trade quickly. I'll give you guys an idea on how the lines may look. So left wing. If we go to the overalls. It's most likely going to be Quentin Robbins, Bjork. Third line will probably be our left uh, wing franchise player. Depending on what his role is. Or he's going to be second line. And I'm thinking Timbishov to be on the, the fourth line there. Is what I'm thinking. Or Wood, depending on which player does better for me. So preseason is also a really, really key thing to, to look at the your players and 
see what roles they, they fit into. I usually give some of my lower league players a chance too, just to give them a look at the NHL basically. So my uh, center depth is going to be uh, Matt Deshane, Ricard Raquel. Now, any two of these can, can make the first line to be honest. Uh, I think, I imagine that they're around the same overall. And then we're going to have Patty B on the third line. Or maybe Aiden Wet because he did play third line role last season. Well, we'll kind of see which one makes the third line and which one makes the fourth line. And then we go over to right wing. So the right side is going to be Blake Wheeler, Kapanen. Now any two of these can make the, the first or second line. And then we're going to have Eakin who can also make an appearance on one of the two top lines. We'll kind of see where he fits in. And he's also a sniper, so we're going to try to make sure that he's not playing with our, our left wing sniper because he is also a sniper. And we don't want him put into that role where he has to set up our, our franchise winger. And then we have Tom Wilson, who is also going to play maybe either fourth or third line, depending on where our left winger is set to play. Defensively, we have Truba, Byram. Um, this offensive player named Jorg Jens, I think it's called, who is most likely going to play on the first line with Truba. Byram's going to play with Julius Honka because Julius Honka has really good uh, skating and endurance. And that's where Byram seems to be lacking with his endurance and his offensive skills. And then I think it's going to be Lovejoy and Jacobs who will take on the, the top six role. And if I go over to goaltending again, it's going to be Yusuf Sars and our upcoming goaltender, Yerker Yarvinen, who hopefully is ready for a backup role. If not, we'll make a trade for a backup goaltender. But uh, yeah, that's just an idea on what the, the team is looking like in the, the first year of um, the medium franchise left wingers appearance, pretty much. And I guess I'll be back at the end of the season. All right, what's up, dude? So we are back with our medium franchise left winger sniper Boucher. And after the first initial year in the NHL, he he had a pretty good season. He had 56 points, 33 goals, and was a plus six. So he's definitely set out to be a, a huge time goal scorer in the NHL, an impact player for our team. Um, I'm going to give you a quick run through on who he played with and how he started out. So like any other player that you, you draft in the top five, they're usually going to be a, a third liner to start off the season. That's going to be their initial role, whether it's a medium franchise player. I've never pulled a high franchise player, just by the way, so I wouldn't know anything about that. But uh, usually they start off in the third line, and that's where we started off Boucher. And I did do a lot of... Uh, um, test in the preseason to see where he, he, he played because he or I do have the, the setting set to uh, ghost whatever whatever that setting is so yeah I'm gonna give you a quick run through before I drafted Gilbert Boucher I did interview him I don't know if I mentioned this and I figured out what his weakness was and that's a huge part in growing a player is figuring out the weakness and figuring out their strengths so that you can attack both of those so, Gilbert Boucher's weakness was that he wasn't exactly uh, a physical player. He wasn't the type of player that threw hits and all that. So, I made sure that I went out and got Tom Wilson to play the third line with uh, Gilbert Boucher and our center, young centerman, Aiden Witt. And when we started out the, the season, Gilbert Boucher didn't exactly do as much as I wanted him to. His point production wasn't exactly there. He started to go down in the minus, around minus five, and at one point he was a minus eleven. But eventually he did pick up his uh, pick up his uh, production and he started producing for us. And slowly he became a second line forward role. And at that point we played him with our Ricard Raquel, who we, we picked up in a trade after acquiring our left wing sniper and Kasperi Kapanen and for the most part of the season as you can tell he did play with them and that's probably one of the reasons why they had so many points this season is that they were playing with a medium franchise player for a good part of the season so uh, yeah that that was pretty pretty decent and during this time we had Matt Deshane playing with uh, Blake Wheeler and Quinton Robbins 
And although Blake really didn't exactly do as much as I wanted him to do, if we go and look at his stats, the, the past two seasons he had 103 points for both seasons. And this season he only had 81 points, it was a plus 8, so he did drop in production quite significantly. And if you look at his stats, his acceleration, his speed, everything is starting to deplete, so I don't intend on bringing him back again this season because of that and also because of I feel like he did take away a little bit of light from uh, our scoring wingers here Quinton Robbins and Boucher he had 35 goals and 46 assists and although he was setting them up he also was taking a lot of the scoring chances away if you look at the amount of shots in his um, shooting percentage um, 234 at 15% whereas Quinton Robbins shooting percentage was 11 and 224 Boucher had 233 shots and 14.2. So uh, we definitely want to switch um, Blake Wheel out and possibly get a playmaking winger to play up on the first lines or something, or in the top six. If not, we we may not even get it or make an acquisition. We we might keep the team or the team in the same because if you look at Kasperi Kapanen, he he is capable of playing that second line while Boucher and Quinton Robbins play up on the first line with uh, Matt Deshane or Ricard Raquel. We'll see exactly who will do better come next season. One of the major things I do want to switch up also is if we go to defense here, we, we didn't exactly have a defenseman who, who put up a lot of points. And although we have this um, young guy, York here, who's an offensive defenseman, he also didn't put up too many points but he was present for most of the point production if you look at his plus minus here he was a plus 18 and that kind of signifies that he was on the ice for most of the points that were scored so although he wasn't the initial pass to the goal scorers he he was on the ice for most of the point production so my plan here is to get rid of Truba bring a in a defensive defenseman who can also score points but shut it down like significantly to play with our offensive defenseman here and hopefully that will bump up his uh, offensive numbers there. Goaltending wise, we tried to get rid of Yus Soros last season. We've had him for quite a while. He's not exactly a starting goaltender. But uh, when it came to free agency, there wasn't any starting goaltenders available. So we're probably going to look into getting a starting goaltender before the next uh, or the start of next season in order to help with... Uh, the point production against us. We do have Yervin in here, but he didn't do very good last season, or this season, I mean. If you look at his numbers right here. He might be ready to play a more significant backup role this coming season, but uh, we, we will look into getting a, a starting goaltender. But uh, yeah, other than that, there's not much else I want to look at. We did trade Daniel Sprung off to uh, Boston for Andrews Bjork and the only reason I did that is because we needed someone who could play a, a shorthanded role and that was Andrews Bjork and also play, come and bring a defensive game to to the team here and the reason I'll, or one of the big reasons I did that is because we acquired Blake Wheeler we didn't know we no longer needed uh, Daniel Sprong for that first line and Blake Wheeler did quite a bit better than Daniel Sprong if we go look at his numbers 80 points compared to uh, 62 points. And actually, I think <laughs> a Kasperi Kapanen almost did, did as good as uh, Daniel Sprung here. And he was playing second line. But uh, I can't exactly say that we lost this this trade. Because, like I said, Andrews Bjork brought a defensive game to uh, our team here. And we, we really did need that in order to make the playoffs. Oh, by the way, we did get bumped in the first round of the playoffs, which is, I'm not too worried about. Like I said, our goaltender, our goaltending situation, defensive um, situation isn't exactly the best. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be looking to improve all that and hopefully make this team better for next year in order to help Gilbert Boucher turn into a franchise player. Um, maybe he can score 100 points next season. You never know. We'll, we'll, we'll see if that's possible. But uh, improvements are, are to be made. So that's the first season for our medium franchise sniper. Let's hope that the second season looks a lot better. Okay, dudes, we are back. And after this season, like this season actually felt like it took forever. 
It was a long-hearted season for the, the Saskatoon Gladiators. I had a really hard time getting this team into the playoffs this year. And I don't know why this, this team looked good as I thought it was. I mean, like, looking at the players on the team, I thought this team was an absolute contender of a team, but apparently not. Our medium franchise sniper literally had to um, carry this team into the playoffs pretty much. Without him on the team, this team wouldn't be good at all, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, you're looking at the points here. He had 74 points compared to last year where he only had um, 56 points. He was a plus 18. And he went from 89 overall to a 91 overall this season. Um, I do plan on naming him captain now, especially after an amazing season by him. I think I'm going to keep Quentin Robbins because he did do fairly decent on the, the right side of uh, Boucher there. But what I do plan on doing probably is switching out one of these centers for an even better center to play in between these two. Because as you can tell, they, they did fairly decent, but they didn't do as well as I expected them to do. I mean, Raquel had 66 points, Deshane had 63 points, and Deshane is 35 years old, so he looks like he's just on his way to uh, drop in overall and all that. So we're definitely going to want to switch him out. Um, one of the major surprises was uh, our offensive defenseman, the medium elite guy. He had 54 points and was a plus 11 compared to last year We only when he only had 22 points. And the reason for this is because I went out, I made a big trade with uh, um, Chicago Blackhawks for Colton Pareko, who if you look at his season last year, he did a lot better last year. He, was, he had 30 points as a plus 42. So I made the trade for him because he was on the trade block um, in order to help our defenseman here. And, you know, if you look at Colton Preco, he is a defensive defenseman and he's a big, big defenseman too, a big physical defenseman. So we needed someone to shut down the opposition while Jorg here made some offensive plays. And that definitely helped out the team and Jorg's uh, playing style. So uh, we're definitely going to keep uh, Pareko there on that top pairing with Jorg in, in order to grow this guy. Um, one of the major things I am going to change for next season is I'm going to get rid of Kapanen because he didn't do very good this season. We're going to want someone on that second line to, to produce more points. I mean, he did do good the, the previous season, but this season he wasn't as good as I, I want him to, wanted him to be. We made a coaching change, and I think that's one of the reasons why he didn't do good. The coach is more of a, a cycle kind of guy, whereas if you look at Kapanen's uh, puck skills, he he doesn't have that very good passing and whatnot. So we're going to get someone who has a little better passing to, to play that second line with uh, either Raquel and uh, Bjork, it looks like it'll be. Because I, th I feel like I, I really do feel like Deshane's gone after this season. We're going to have to get a new center to, to take that top pairing. Other than that, we're. we're Typically going to keep everything else the same. I mean, if we go down to the AHL, we do have some upcoming characters in Dupre, who's 22 years old, a, a sentiment. And then we have a right winger in Robinson Spencer. So, uh, yeah, we, we have these guys coming up and maybe even it looks like possibly uh, Tristan Dirksen, who's a medium elite left winger. We'll see if he's ready. And if not, then we'll probably have to trade him off before he, his potential and his uh, trade value goes down. So uh, other than that, one last thing I do want to mention is that I did acquire, let's see, Jordan Binghamton for, for goaltending position. And although he, he had a fairly decent season, we won't be bringing him back because in this playoffs, he actually didn't do very well for me, despite his uh, poise being at 95. Yurkai Yarvinen is definitely ready for a starting position. He actually was ready this season. I think that's one of the reasons why we had to claw our way into the, the playoffs here because we had two starting goaltenders basically uh, competing for a position here. And that's not good. You never want to have two starting goaltenders. For some reason, it, it really screws with the morale and how much ice time they get. So, uh, yeah, other than that, we, we are going to make a bunch of changes 
By the way, we, we made it to the third round, the conference finals, and lost to Vancouver after a, a hard-fought battle. If you look at the Lions, this is how the Lions looked at the, the end of the, the season here. I did move Matt Deshane down to the second line because we were losing games to Vancouver for some reason. We did bring up Liam Kirk during this playoff run, and he, he absolutely did amazing for us. I don't know if we'll keep him around. Most, more than likely, we will keep him around. I had to move Marshall Eakin down to the fourth line because he, he started doing bad for me. Yeah, other than that, we're going to make some major changes and hopefully prepare for a better year next season. And maybe our left-wing franchise sniper will have an even better season. Hopefully we can get him 100 points. That's the goal for the next season and maybe even a cup. But uh, yeah, other than that, I will be back again. All right, what's up, dude? So we're back and for the second season in a row, we get bumped in the the court or the conference finals. This time against Anaheim. Um, last season it was against the Vancouver Canucks, who ended up going on to to win the cup there. And the sad thing about getting bumped this time, and it hurts so much, is that one of our top four pairing defensemen actually got injured during this, and we were winning this uh, matchup against the. The, the Anaheim Ducks here and it, it really seemed like we were gonna win like hands down easy and then Bo and Byram ended up getting injured here which really 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 sucks for me because I was really hoping this was the season that we we got uh our franchise sniper the the cup but it looks like we're gonna be continuing our grind on attempting to get him a cup but uh anyways Gilbert Boucher is now age 21 he is in his uh, second season of the NHL. Well, the third season, I apologize. And in this season, he, he he had an amazing season. He had 56 goals. He had 39 assists. So a career high, and he had 95 points altogether. We also named him captain last season. And I think that may have boosted his uh, confidence in, in some sort of way and made him do better. He almost had 100 points. He was, a five, he was five points off. So we intend on... Getting him that 100 points maybe next season, hopefully. There's not too much I want to change. We will get rid of Matt Deshane for sure this time and try to get a, a new sentiment to play with these two two guys up here. One thing we did change was we, we brought in Timo Meyer for the second line here. He's a power forward and he, he brings a physical game. So that's one of the things that we do need for the playoffs. I mean, even though we, we did well without it last season, it's... Uh, pretty key factor but uh, I'm actually looking at him at the moment I'm making a decision currently on whether I'll move uh, Marshall Eakin up to the second line and uh, bump maybe Timo Meyer out of out of our team here but you never know we might even get rid of uh, Bjork here Andrews Bjork if that's how you pronounce it uh, there's not too much I do want to change come next season we may get rid of uh, Dupre here and get an actual fourth line sentiment into this position because we do have Aiden Witt and he's a two-way forward sentiment. He has good chemistry with uh, Boucher and Robbins who are our top uh, players at the moment. So we, we don't want to get rid of him. We'll mostly get rid of Dupre and get an actual penalty kill in, in that position or a two-way forward basically. We're probably going to keep the defense pairings the same. I know Pareko says his potential is top six now, but I feel like he has at least a year in him or so, in my opinion. So we're going to use him for those uh, for that last year before he really, really starts to deplete. Goaltending-wise, Yervinen, we used him, switching from Binghamton last year, and he did fairly good. We're going to use him again. And, uh, yeah, there's not too much I want to change for next season other than get a... An actual sentiment to play with these two guys in order to boost their production maybe and maybe that could really really push us to the to the limit here and get uh, Gilbert Boucher the the cup and before I move on from here I do want to mention that if I'm unsuccessful again the cup I'm still gonna upload this because it's a uh, it's a good uh, good thing to follow I guess in a way he, he is at 94 overall so he is turning out to be a really good player and 
having a really good career so far so um, yeah I'll still upload this and it give you guys an idea on how to grow a, a medium franchise uh, potential player but uh, yeah other than that we will move on from here okay dude so after another long season of attempting to to get the cup for our franchise winger we were once again unsuccessful and we got dipped in the second round which I honestly don't understand because when you look at this team, this team looks absolutely not exactly stacked, but almost stacked. I guess I could have updated the def the defense a little bit, uh, a little better. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna do one more season of this, and if we don't win the cup successfully the this next season, I'm just gonna end the video there because this is a fairly long video and. I'd be surprised if people are still watching at this point. But the, the idea here was to get Gilbert Boucher, our franchise winger, and turn him into a, a kind of a successful player. He is at 96 overall and he's accumulated a hell of a lot of or a hell of a lot of points here. He had 93 points and was a plus 48 this season. He had 95 points and was a plus 20 last season. So I'm hoping this upcoming season we can really push him to the limit here and get over 100 points for him uh, i think grabbing a, a center for him to play with because we do have robbins here on the other side who is a really good player but uh yeah if we grab a, a centerman for them to play with uh i assure you they'll, they'll more than likely get 100 points we we do want to update the defense maybe a little bit here but the idea here is to to build around the character if you look at his uh his morale and everything you can tell by the teammates right there it's not that very good but we we did do successfully on the management the individual performance and the team performance so if we we grab him some new teammates here that play w better with him that that bar should go up a little bit and uh, if you look over here by high locker room chemistry and best locker room chemistry these are the type of players you want to keep on the team with them at all costs because that's what makes him do good in a way he he, he does need uh i guess you can say friends or something like that i quote and also best locker room chemistry is aiden witt uh i was thinking of playing him on the first time with them but as you can tell from the the chemistry it's a minus one so it's kind of saying that that's not exactly a good idea but keeping him on the second line um that it should make boucher do a lot better but uh, if you do have a chance to to play someone with uh, good chemistry with uh, the character you're trying to grow, it's probably best because of the, the chemistry that they have. But uh, yeah, so we're going to do one more season of this and hopefully I can get the cup this time. And if not, I will end the video and I will probably just do an update video on his uh, growth and whatnot because once again, this is a very long video. But uh, yeah, other than that, we will continue on all right dude so after doing this season like i said it'd be the last season that i do because this video is going to be fairly long gilbert boucher had a really good season and honestly the season started out really slow i think for the first 10 or 20 games we were at the bottom of the league and then all of a sudden i, I decided to make a couple trades and the, the team started producing and we, we made it to the, the first team in the conference come the end of the season. And although we became all so close to winning the cup this season, like we were really close this time, you guys. No matter how good of players you have, no matter what players you have, you, you can't beat the, the EA simulation system. It honestly will choose basically what team it wants to win in a way, no, no matter what you do. But the, there are some things you can do to, to, to help prevent that. But a lot of the times the EA system simulation, it, it's, it, it's kind of bogus at times. And I'll get a little bit into that in a bit here. But uh, basically over the five seasons that passed for Gober Boucher he accumulated about 416 points altogether in 410 games played so that's 
an, an impressive uh, scoring bout, I guess. He had he was a plus 124, so he, he definitely was a game changer for the the Saskatoon Gladiators. And yeah, he 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 didn't hit 100 points, although this season he was very close to it. I'll, I'll just give you guys a little idea on how the team looks at the moment. Quinton Robbins and Gilbert Boucher is a really good duo that I kept together for the the, the whole entirety of this. Uh, how to video we did pick up Jack Hughes for this season but his endurance was only 78 so that was a fairly big problem come playoffs time you definitely want to get a, a first line center that that's endurance is a lot better than this but he was the only one available to, to pick up at free agency we did pick up Kevin Fiala and swapped him out with uh, Anders Bjork because Bjork wasn't doing too good and that made for a deadly second line for this playoff run. We also picked up Jake Martinuk and swapped out Timishov, who we had for almost the entirety of this how to video. And then the fourth line, this is the fourth line. So we had a fair amount of our young players. Our defensive core looks basically the same as it did last season. Pareko did drop quite a bit, which was one of the, the killers for this uh, playoff run, to be honest. If he, if he was at the, the overall he was at, he pro we probably would have won. But uh, here we go. <laughs> you look at the Toronto Maple Leafs winning. Oh, oh my, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fact that we lost in this simulation, it makes honestly no sense to me. You go down to the Toronto Maple Leafs. They have a very decent first line. So I can imagine that being a, a deadly force, which it was with Matthews accumulating most of the goals there but you come down to the second line and they have Radic, Faxa and Connor Brown for the second line and Antonio Stranja is whatever third line Lucas Gawk Reasoner who are also minuses so I, I really don't understand how we lost against this team and Yerkai Pentakainen and then what really baffles me is when you go down to here they they have a defense on the fourth line so I, I, I honestly don't understand what's up with the, the the simulation system I'm not gonna do another season I might give you guys an update on how Gilbert Boucher is doing and if he he won a cup yet because he's only 23 years old um, you look at Jacob Slavin and Timothy Lilligren who were minus during this and they are definitely the, the best defenseman on the team. And then you go down and you have a 7D pairing defenseman playing on the second pairing. And Jet Wu. You go down again, Haino and Matt Grillick. And then you go over to the, the goaltending and you got two backup goaltenders. So I honestly don't understand why we, we lost this series. I really don't. The EA simulation system really knows how to screw people over, I guess. And <laughs> I guess you can say I'm a little bit aggravated, but at the same time, not so much because the, the whole idea of this video was to, to show how to grow a medium franchise winger and honestly I'll say that I was pretty successful looking at his stats and that was the whole point of this video. It's a kind of an individual effort on the, the player itself basically, not so much a, a team effort. I, I do feel like I will win him a cup eventually and if I do I will update you guys on that. But uh, yeah, so... As you can tell at the start of the video, I did give you guys an idea. Uh, I'll do a brief run through. We started him on the third line and we allowed him to grow into his spot. So as soon as he became a second liner, we, we moved him up to the second line. As soon as he became uh, a first liner, we moved him up to the first line. And another thing you want to make sure is that if you have players better than him, like offensively, then you want to make sure they, they get the, the more ice time on the special teams until he, he grows into that position. So you don't want to move him up 
too quick is it's basically the idea to, to grow a franchise winger and looking at his shooting that's another thing you look at his uh, wrist shot accuracy and slap shot accuracy they're both the same but if you look at the power his, his slap shot power is a little bit better than his wrist shot so maybe one thing you can do better than me is maybe switch him on to this side on the power play so that he, he does take slap shots and maybe that will bump up his uh, scoring production. But uh, keeping him on the, the side that he's supposed to be on it was a major factor in growing him and the players that he played with basically. You also want to look at his uh, the scheme fit. Definitely that's one of the big things that you want to look at. And uh, the, the chemistry he has with uh, the players around him. And then also quickly I'd like to mention that the, the, the coaching is a big factor also. Look at your coaching staff, you come over here. My head coach, I think that's one of the, the biggest things you wanna look at. And he works very well with Boucher and a lot better with our defenseman, um, Jorg Gens or however you say it. Like perfectly fits well with him. And that was also another big factor is that our defenseman had a really good uh, coach to work with, so he was allowed, who, which allowed him to to produce more assists, which allowed Boucher to produce more goals, and uh, so on. But if you could find a, a coach that works perfectly with your medium franchise player, that would probably make it a lot better for the player itself. But uh, yeah, other than that, there's not too much else I want to mention in this video. I know this video is fairly long. And if you made it this far, congrats. I mean, you, you made it through a very long how-to video. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment on what videos you'd like to see. Maybe you want to see a medium franchise uh, defenseman or a medium elite forward or defenseman. A how-to video on one of those. I can do one of those for sure if you would like and yeah so thanks for watching leave a like subscribe if you're new to this channel peace out dudes